High School Musical 3 senior year follows Troy Bolton, the power bottom of vocal harmonies, as he navigates the pressures of his final year of high school, such as breaking up with his girlfriend and teaching his dad the same lesson for the third time. When are you gonna get the hint that this man doesn't want you to follow your dreams? Just accept that Coach Bolton won't be satisfied until the day you strap on some Air Jordans and slam dunk your firstborn through a basketball hoop. The big budget theatrical release of this movie means that senior year has a fresh new cinematic look, with a script that takes all of the fan favorite characters, settings, and storylines, and props their bloodied corpses up in the corner, while force feeding us boyhood fantasy scenes and British side characters. Grab your playbill and take your seat for a final act of endless duets, high contrast conflict, and more gigantic plaid shorts than an old tiny clown convention. It's time to graduate, my friends, with another high school musical flavored installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and whatever else so that we can disembowel them like a Camp Crystal Lake counselor and look at each little entrail and decide whether I personally think it's funny or stupid. <laughs> I am the arbiter of everyone's success and today I've got something special up on the chopping block. We've already covered High School Musical 1 and High School Musical Two, but High School Musical 3 is special because it's the first one that came out in theaters. It's also arguably the worst one out of all three of them. I'm sorry, I know some of you are going to disagree with that. I'm going to back up my statement, so you just stay put. But first, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns just like this. It really helps let me know that you're into the content. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on the bell icon so you'll always get notifications every time I drop something new in your entrails. Also, you can check out my merch in the links below, and I have a Patreon now so you can get exclusive content and extra bonuses. It wouldn't be a high school musical movie if we didn't start with a boring basketball game just to keep, I don't know, the older brothers in the audience happy. I can't with basketball games. The squeaky shoes on hardwood floor, it sends me running. It sends me run into the field. Troy, however, that's music to his ears, baby. It's game time. Dribbling, dribbling, here we go. <sighs> I know that look. Troy Bolton has just experimented with his first adult size anal bead. Senior year, baby, it's a rite of passage. Also, I don't care how long you show me that scoreboard for. I'm not gonna suddenly learn basketball by looking at it. It's not the Rosetta Stone of stuff that bothers me. I was, however, able to understand that one team that's not the Wildcats is winning. So when the team gets back into the locker room, it's time for some motivation. Forget about the scoreboard. I'm trying, but you gave it so much screen time in the opening shot. Don't yell at me, Daddy Bolton. I don't know why they told everyone in this movie to grow their hair out, including the dad. He's like, I'm rocking some length here. That 90s middle part. Only got 16 minutes left, don't wear a cat uniform. But it's gonna take me longer than 16 minutes to scrub this paw print off my scalp. You mean I'm gonna have an obsolete head tat? Ugh, that's so not Wildcat-like. Captains! We already knew Troy was the captain, but it seems like there's two now. You heard coach. We're all gonna remember the next 16 minutes for a long time after we leave East High. Chad. What team? Well, yes! The school decided to make Chad a co-captain, so at least when he screams like that, it kind of makes sense a little bit. It's easier than getting anger management courses for the athletes. It's boring admin stuff, don't worry about it. One thing that we get from this movie is generous crowd scenes with lots of production and lights and extras. <laughs> Martha's journey from being the brainiac to the head cheerleader shows that in Hollywood, you can do anything with the right shapewear. Also, the only difference between a smart girl and a sexy girl is whether the tops of her boobs are showing. The first song from High School Musical doesn't make a good impression on me because it's basically happening underneath this basketball game. And the audio mixing is very professional. They mix in a lot of sound effects with the song, which is expensive in a musical like this. But I feel like I can't hear the music. <laughs> HSM3, I appreciate you for trying to get the basketball out of the way early, but I'm pretty sure this is just an in sync song with the volume turned down. Despite him failing to get his head in the game a little bit, Troy Bolton gets some inspiration from the stands. <laughs> Uh, yes, Gabriella, do you have some basketball input or are you just looking for a throat lozenge? A soothing relief, Tri-Ricola. That encouragement 
somehow gives him the strength to win the game. Um, so great. I think that means the basketball season's over and you would hope that that means the end of all basketball mentions ever, but Chad, for some reason, has a basketball in his hand like all the time. Chad also in this movie is also like hulked out. He's always walking around like he's ready to seriously punch a bitch. Also, Troy still seems to have like money issues throughout this movie, despite the fact that there seems to be an unlimited budget for anything school related. I'm saving for a new school. Oh, mm-hmm. Say faster. Hey Troy, how many basketball scholarships did it take to get that huge wildcat puppet at your well-chaperoned house party? While at this party, we meet one of our first completely new characters to the series. His name is something, but they call him Rocket Man. He's like a Troy Bolton wannabe who's excited to hopefully take his place on the team the next year. But he's like a freshman, so he's brushed off quite a bit. Meanwhile, Troy and Gabriella have absconded to a new setting. We have this tree house, which is huge. You're the second girl I've ever had up here. The first was my mom. Well, I'm honored. This place is so cool. Really? What parts do you think are the most cool? The rusty nails or the dirty wood ruining your white dress? You don't have to pretend you like it when some man drags you up a tree at a nice party. Come on, have some words in your throat, Gabriella. And words they do have because we go right into Troy and Gabriella's very first number. This is gonna be a global note for High School Musical. You guys gotta stop with the Troy and Gabriella duets. I think you really overestimated the charm and charisma that this real life couple was generating on screen. I, for one, don't care. Maybe it just lost its magic to me because I know they're not together anymore. Maybe at the time people were like, oh my God, and they're really boyfriend and girlfriend in real life. That doesn't make your song interesting. That's just two people wailing in a sound booth. <laughs> No, Troy's treehouse doesn't actually have a hydraulic roof. This whole scene is symbolic of his love for Gabriella. That ceiling represents his hymen. This song, I don't know, it's just slow for me. I guess the songs that I really love in High School Musical are the ones where there's huge crowds of people singing. Like if I think back to High School Musical 2, my favorite out of all of them, we started with What Time Is It? And that was such a good banger to kick off the whole movie with, right? Like I was like, I'm in for the ride. We're 12 minutes into High School Musical 3 and all I feel is belittled for not liking basketball and like I'm about to get a splinter in this bunk ass tree house. We'll be right down, mom. <laughs> Should we do a take where her laughter seems a little more natural? Listen, we got a lot of bullshit to get through on this script and we're only on like page six. We can do whatever you want, but I mean, there are several moments in this movie where I don't know how Kenny Ortega was directing them to fake laugh, but everyone in this movie is throwing their heads back and laughing like they're at a telethon for St. Jude's Hospital. You're not getting paid extra for this. They're like, oh, oh, oh. Lots of oh sounds are like, oh, oh. oh. If that's how you think teenagers sound, prehistoric teenagers were all into those glutteral noises, but I don't know what you guys are doing, but I think the opening scene could have been stronger. Why couldn't they have given me like a we're all in this together type opening at the end of a basketball game? Like, oh, maybe we have the pep rally and they end up winning and then there's a big celebration. Even at this school party, it could be a big celebration where they're like, it's senior year and we're excited to lose our virginity. That would be like more exciting for me than them being at the basketball court and being like, a scooby bop and I'm doing the dance and I'm dribbling balls and I'm wearing shoes. Anyway, as soon as we start to introduce Sharpay, we know who the real star of this franchise is. Obviously, it's Ashley Tisdale in this role. The only reason this movie even kind of works, and it actually doesn't work, so the only thing I liked about this part of the movie. That's right, everyone, get out of the way. Another white girl thinks she invented hair extensions. Throughout this movie, I do really like Ashley Tisdale's look. They clearly got better costumes, better hair, better makeup for everyone, but uh, particularly Sharpay's character. I also like that they kind of developed Sharpay by this movie into being a little bit of a ditz. It makes her really funny. Hey, Troy, so, when's the big game? Uh, yesterday. Oh, well, good luck. Wow. So sweet. Uh, okay, thank you, Zeke. Make sure to check back every 30 minutes for your one line. Keep an ear out for a creme brulee reference. Oh, and don't leave set until someone from production scans your token black card. I love Sharpay's double wide locker. It's very luxurious, but unfortunately we have to meet a new side character. I forget her name. The new character's name is Tiara, and she basically wants to be Sharpay's little assistant. She's British, do you love it? This is how you know a franchise is on its last leg. You start adding in these random characters 
characters because you've done all that you can with the existing ones. We're already on very well-trod territory with Troy, Gabriella, Sharpay, Tad, Ryan, Kelsey, and Taylor. So they kind of have to give us new characters to start introducing fresh story ideas. How do you know my schedule? I took the liberty of checking. To make certain, I'd have your non-fat, no foam, soy latte ready for free period. Just because you're British, you should still know how liquid behaves. There's no latte in that bag, mama. Don't lie. That's an empty brown bag. As seniors, it's very busy for all of the Wildcats, and Taylor's kind of helping everyone keep tabs on all they have to do. Picture deadline is Thursday, and final set of groups alternate with all of the above. Questions? What's the lunch special in the cafeteria today? <laughs> <laughs> New York Deli. Anyone else? Anyone else want to get totally domed by a girl in a Stuart Little tie? Another reason I don't really care for this movie is that all of the side characters seem really flat. The whole movie, Taylor is like the head of the yearbook committee, and there are even moments where she snaps pictures of funny events, but that absolutely never pays off. I would have loved if they could have made it some sort of video yearbook, a la Camp Rock 2. They even established in High School Musical 2 that Jason was into making videos, so why couldn't he have been like the cameraman who was video recording? recording for the yearbook that Taylor was directing and she was like, yeah, make sure we get that. You know, that could have been a funny thing that keeps her active throughout the story. But of course, senior year doesn't mean that there's no spring musicale. In fact, <laughs> A little light on the sign-ups, Kelsey? Um, no, we're actually doing pretty well. Almost the entire home room. Oh, yeah. How inspiring. Uh, hell yes, Ms. Darvis. I am also inspired by the queer girl forging all of your signatures. Sometimes equal rights means we make the rules. Listen, Kelsey has put on an amazing production for three years in a row now. If you don't think she knows what she's doing when she writes her name on that list, you're stupid. If it weren't for Kelsey, you would spend your whole senior year bouncing basketballs against the wall and getting diarrhea from the cafeteria food. She's giving you some substance. Back off, whole town. Everyone's mad at her because she signed them up, but it's okay. Things get where they need to get. The spring musicale is all about you. Wow, the last time we saw Miss Darvis shift her weight that fast, it was because she blew out a knee replacement. Also, those kids better back up. When a music teacher shakes her beads like that at you, it means she's about to spray. Miss Darvis' genius idea is for this to be a completely original show. About all of you. A show about your final days at East High. Ending with a horrific gas leak that kills everyone at prom. Juilliard will be sending representatives to observe our show. Oh, but it wouldn't be a high school musical moment unless at some event towards the end of the the movie, there are some important scouts in the audience. Now, I can kind of buy it when you're like, oh, a college basketball scout's gonna be watching you, Troy, but Juilliard? I don't know about that. But that's what Darvis says. She's like, the four of you are up for a scholarship. It's Ryan, Sharpay, Kelsey, and surprisingly, Troy Bolton. Good luck to our four applicants. <laughs> Who's the big comedian? I didn't apply. I've never heard of Juilliard. Evidently, Juilliard has heard of you. Juilliard has talent scouts crawling the country all year, honey. If you think there's a single twink singing at an assembly that their guys don't know about, then you don't know theater school, bro. As they get ready for the show, it's clear that while others have their future kind of figured out, Troy is not so sure. Mr. Bolton, hmm? your future. Uh, uh. You know, uh... Listen, I know I'm gonna marry Gabriella, and then I'm pretty sure if I can't figure out a way to have her push a living, breathing basketball out of her ass, my dad is gonna murder us. Gabriella jumps in and is like, I think we should stage the perfect prom. The way that this movie romanticizes prom, like it's so creepily nostalgic, you would think everyone who worked on this movie got finger banged on a dance floor once. We get our obligatory lunchroom scene, but this one is expanded upon. All you need to know about Sharpay in this movie is that she's trying to make sure Troy and Gabriella don't get the best song in the musical. She wants Troy and Gabriella's part in the musical. Yeah, we've already done this storyline like twice already. It's so boring. And the fact that this British girl in a jumper is right next door doesn't make me feel any better. Okay, she might be better at handling liquids than I expected, or someone is straight up water bending the liquid in that glass into submission. I watched that 17 times, trying to figure out, did she get her hands wet? Why did that splash but not get empty? Was it one of those magic cups? I need to know more. Sharpay and Ryan launch into a fantasy scene about Sharpay having everything she wants in the future. She wants to be a superstar, and this song kind of solidifies those intentions. And it's also the only redeemable song in this whole movie, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I, this is the only one that I mess with. And it starts with her talking. She's like, imagine having everything that you ever dreamed. Don't you want it? Like, I wish this whole movie were Sharpay's fantasy scene of what the world could be. I wish that, I guess I'm gonna really like Sharpay's big adventure, which I haven't seen. But listen to the chorus of this song. It's epic. I 
want the world, nothing less. All the glam and success always giving me the best reviews. I want it all. Anyway, it's the only song that I really like. So <laughs> I wish we could stay here forever, but we gotta move on. What you do need to know, however, is that High School Musical 3 starts to go into this device where the musical numbers look a little bit like the staged productions that are going on. So it gives you this show within a show feel. Yeah. Elsie, you promised you could keep that hat on, and now I gotta get the staple gun. I want it all! The layers start to peel back for the secrets that Gabriella's keeping. Who got us into this? <laughs> Which I don't understand, considering you may not even be here for the show. Have you told anyone you're up for Stanford's freshman honors program? Well, you're gonna be hearing from them any day. Yeah, and when do you hear back from that little Easter Sunday schoolboy whose outfit you stole? The little tiny baby ties they have Taylor in in this movie are out of control. They're like, we think for High School Musical 3, Taylor has all wool clothing and a high heat dryer. Gabriella gets summoned to Troy in her magic place up on the roof where no kid should ever have access at a high school. Hello, risk factors. Well, I've never been asked to a prom, but this almost sounds like an invitation. I've never been to a dance. Much less a prom. Troy has never been to a high school dance before his senior year because to his dad, it's sacrilegious to use a basketball court for anything non-sport related. You cannot put streamers in my court of basketball. Basketball, the baskets. We'll get ball. Think of the baskets. Oh, I just gotta call it out. Every time Troy and Gabriella have another duet, because I'm shocked every time it's another duet, I'm like, is it really gonna be four minutes of you two just harmonizing? I'm so bored. Now you're waltzing on the roof? Is this Roger and Hammerstein's nightmare? I wanna go crazy. At this point, you two couldn't get too close to the edge of that roof. You guys could be doing a balance beam routine and I'd, I'd be watching. This is that song. It's like catching lightning and we're never fighting except every movie. I don't care. I don't care. It wouldn't be High School Musical if they weren't always teasing us with a kiss. I don't care if your lips touch. I hope they don't. Honey, are you a secret bag of squirrels? You are so jumpy when it comes to kissing. You jumped like that school bell was echoing off your diva cup. Was it creating a Tibetan sound bowl effect? These two freshmen, Jimmy and Donnie, it's their time to get kind of initiated into the Wildcats with some good old fashioned bullying. Well, it's like you said, you gotta earn them. Wait, what's that supposed oh. to mean? Hey, God, hey, stop playing dead! <laughs> Young naked boys. What a fun, hilarious sight for everyone here at this school. What are you doing? Why are you all laughing so hard at these moist children? The way that the whole school reacts to this thing that Chad and Troy just did, which to me felt like all of a sudden very mean spirited. I don't really understand anyone's reactions. None of it makes sense. <laughs> Kenny Ortega was sitting behind the camera going, I don't know, Zach, I'm just not sure if you're giving us $3 million worth of fake laughter right now. Let's push it a little harder. He said, ho, ho, ho. Seemingly confused about why two people would appear naked in the middle of a high school, Miss Darvis, she thinks that these two kids are doing this on purpose. So she ropes them into the show. The stage crew can use your help during detention. Painting sets. Throw a sheet over. Troy, Chad, thank you for luring these pranksters out of hiding by stealing their clothes. This really upset me. Like, I didn't think that this was super in character for Troy or Chad. Troy Bolton has early stage affluenza. And it's not gonna get better in college, mama. It's gonna get worse. There could have been a thousand other ways to get those two kids, Donnie and Jimmy, into the production. Like, Jimmy was already obsessed with Troy Bolton. And if Troy Bolton's in the show, wouldn't Jimmy be like, hey, maybe we can run lines Together. I think I'm a good singer too. Ah! Like, why don't we get an audition scene with the two of them? They could still do some sort of prank. Like, maybe Jimmy and Donnie are really full of themselves and like, oh, Troy, we're gonna take your place on the team next year. We got this. Oh, and singing sounds easy, whatever. And then they like have the two kids try to audition for the show or sing with everybody and then everyone hears how bad they are. Like, it could be funny. I don't know. The thing where they steal their clothes and Troy and Chad are the ones who are celebrated for it and then the two kids get detention for it, it doesn't make any sense. Troy and Gabrielle are having some quiet alone time. Who chose Stanford? U of A was sort of chosen for me. I haven't talked to anybody about this, but I've had offers from other colleges. I still have decisions to make too. Like what? Oh, I thought I heard you. I was just making some snacks inside. Are you guys hungry? Mom, you're supposed to be at work right now. This is why you keep getting fired. You're just home making general snacks 
for no reason? Why are you wearing high heels at home? Why are you wearing high heels in the grass? The stylist in this whole thing was like, everyone's gonna be dressed like you're the employee in a cell phone commercial. I just gotta say, the mothers in the High School Musical franchise are completely neglected. Like Troy's mom, Gabriella's mom, they're each given like one line. Meanwhile, Troy's dad gets to have a monologue every two seconds. Every time Troy takes a shit, the dad is like, you know, it's all about teamwork when you do that. I mean, I thought some things were just private, but whatever, dad. But there was this whole little interlude with Chad and asking Taylor to the prom. I get so fed up, right? At this point, it's like, this movie is two hours long. Two hours. Tuxedo? For what? For prom. Oh, honey. If that's what you call an invitation, you'll be dancing with yourself. <laughs> oh. The only thing more relaxed than Zac Efron's acting style here is the fit of all of the plaid shorts in this movie. How are all three men in this frame suffering from the same fashion symptom? Shaggy hair, plaid, polos, cargo shorts. Of course, the very next scene, we get to wrap up that little conflict. Chad makes the appropriate grand gesture. Taylor McKessie, will you please be my date to the senior prom? <laughs> be honored. <laughs> Why is the whole school cheering like there's a sale on Bermuda shorts? They're all like, yay, this couple aligns comfortably with my prejudices against race mixing. We go into this sort of show within a show number about the prom. Everything about this prom feels so 1950s sock hop. Boy asks the girl, picks up the girl. This whole number is like chewing rocks. I can't stand it. They, they play up this thing where it's like, the girl's biggest dream is going to the prom. I get to put on dresses and my diaphragm. And then the boys are like, this is so hard, man. How do we do it? I gotta put on tuxes and I gotta wipe my ass. Ready, ready, for the night, the night, the night, the night. Don't panic. Panic! Dad, we already know about you and your gay panic, okay? We know you got issues with your sexuality. It's been discussed in the comments for two videos. In High School Musical 2, people said that I somehow glossed over sexual tension between Chad and Ryan. I didn't mean to do that. It just seems so obvious to me that I didn't even think to mention it. You can see that Ryan wants to get by Chad. That's just business. That's just Disney business. We already see it. Anyway, ugh, this prom song, it really grates on my nerves. Why do I feel like this heteronormative prom song with 1960s gender roles just signed me up for the army? That's not gonna make me into more of a man, okay? That just exposes me to more dudes in underwear. Of course, we have the whole stereotype about the dad being like, you better take care of my daughter tonight. I'm like, we've seen all of this in 1990. Like, I'm tired of this. This is not a sitcom. A mother opens the door, I'm shaking inside. Don't know why, but father's staring me down. He just doesn't know what to think since he found his daughter's birth control prescription. It prevents hormonal acne, dad, as well as unwanted crying ass babies. Also, to these boys, if you really don't know why her dad is staring you down, then the abstinence-based sex ed here at East High is working remarkably well. Like, these kids don't know what their own penises are. Why do I feel like this whole show that the school is putting on for the seniors is basically to make the parents feel nostalgic about when they were in senior in high school? Like, it all feels so cheap and cheesy. The night of nights. Oh my God, is there anything I can do to graduate early or just send me back to middle school? I don't care. Mr. Zara. Yo. I'm making you an understudy. Miss Gold. Oh, yeah. You as well. Oh, we're halfway through, so maybe we need to get those British people involved again with our lives. Why not? Question for the screenwriter. Do you think instead of doing this stupid subplot with the pointless, superfluous side characters, you could just do the humane thing and pop my eyeballs out with your thumbs? Why couldn't we have had Chad and Taylor giving us a little bit of what their relationship is going through during senior year? Are they going to the same school? Are they gonna be staying together? They seem to be handling it fine. Also, they give us a couple scenes where Kelsey and Ryan are really close friends. I would have loved to understand why that relationship is forming, how they're becoming closer through music. Like they could have given me elements of fame where it's like, oh, through our love of art, we're all gonna remember these moments forever. But instead they completely ignore the part that these kids are like all musically talented and just lean into like, but Troy loves Gabriella and Gabriella is quiet and has brown hair. <sighs> I don't care. If I see Gabriella run off in one more long lacy skirt, I'm gonna get her a bottle of the Taylor Swift fragrance and call it a day. I wouldn't sing with you if my hair was on fire and you were the last bucket of water on earth. I wouldn't sing with you if I was starving and you were the last pickle at the picnic. You could both go missing from a Disney cruise ship at this point and I wouldn't even notice. It'd be the same movie to me. So 
argue all you want. I know some of you are gonna disagree with my opinion that High School Musical 3 is so far below one and two, but I know I'm also not the only one. I asked my patrons what they thought, and like Caitlin, for example, had completely aged out of High School Musical by the time this movie had come out, but her sister, who was 10 years younger, was like a new fan. So I guess I can see how it reintroduced it to people. By the way, Caitlin is a Screen Star patron, which gives you lots of different benefits on my Patreon page, including the ability to name a plant. Right now, I have no less than three plants who have been newly named. We have Rhonda here, named by Screen Star patron Ileana. We love Rhonda. She recently got some fillers. That's why her wrinkles are gone. I dry erased them. But now we've also got two more to name. We have this plant here, which was named by Georgia. She chose the name Lizzie McGuire, which I love, giving me all the nostalgia. So everyone say hi to Lizzie McGuire. Welcome to your name. And then Caitlin chose to name the bamboo palm over here. And she went with the very clever name, Keanu Reed. I love that for him or her. I think all my plants are gender neutral because plants are. Keanu Reed, I'm so excited to have your punny name in the mix. There's your label. Now we've got three out of my 10 plants named. Check out my Patreon and you'll see tiers for as low as $1 a month where you get to access my locked videos on YouTube, watch live stream virtual watch parties with me, extra content, postcards, things of that nature. Check it out. Thank you to my screen stars for naming the plants. The exciting moment has come. We find out that Gabriella was accepted into the Stanford College Admissions Honors Freshman Program, whatever it is. She has to go early. Of course, Sierra overhears this good news, which she wants to help Sharpay use to sabotage Gabriella's place in the show. Yeah, we did this already in the first episode, the first movie, where Sharpay printed out Gabriella's academic information and used it to get Gabriella sidetracked from the show. The program starts in two weeks. She'd miss our sh your show. Well, the show must go on. Mustn't it? Stanford said, wow, Ms. Montez, you know, we get a lot of really smart applicants, but here it says that you like animals. Is that right? Because we all have fur babies of our own at home, so you know. The other song that is kind of okay in this movie is this one. Well, free down, you know I'll always be around. Darvis was like, ew, I can smell your underwear through your jeans. The amount of times Troy climbs up on something and does this in this movie, you would think he's part Superman. Like, you've got to stop doing that triumphant arm raise like it's the end of a Gatorade commercial. I don't like you, Troy. I don't like you. I never did like you. And now I'm just tired. Now we're just tired of you and your white ass. Ryan, our choreographer, is still here. Don't forget about him. No one who's not Troy and Gabriella have anything to do with this plot. They're just like adding words all the time. Be the actor that has to follow you. I believe that actor is you, Mr. Cor <laughs> oh, really? See, it's cheesy rehearsal banter like this. That's the reason we're not playing improv games at the cast party. You guys are insufferable. That type of back and forth witty exchange is something that really happens amongst theater people. It's cancer and it needs to stop. Oh, these harmonies are so challenging. Who wrote this thing? <laughs> I believe that was you, Jason. Oh, right. I must have had too much coffee that day. <laughs> And then everyone in the cast is like, oh my God, I hope I get a lead in the next show. If you want some pointless scenes that are gonna add about 10 minutes to this thing, why don't we go to the junkyard where Troy decides to wear this new piece of headgear. You have a radiator cap for me? Dig around over there. I'm sure you'll find what you want. So excited about you boys playing at the U of A next year. Wow. Look, I gotta take off early today. So lock up for me when you're done, will you? While you're at it, why don't you hold on to my social security card and some of my daughter's insulin? The adult men in this universe would trust Troy Bolton to do their vasectomy. I swear, the amount of brotherly trust they have going on, they're like, you know how to throw a football? Great, here are the keys to my car. I love that about you, bro. Toxic masculinity. That's what I get from it. So Troy and Chad are basically talking throughout this, like, remember when we used to play superheroes? Like, we would play pretend and I could be whatever I wanted. I don't want to be just a basketball guy. Like, I want to go back to then when we could be whatever we wanted. It took me, like, three times watching this movie to realize that that's the point they were trying to make with this number, because self-acceptance is not the message that I I get from this. What I get from this number is that when boys are young, they like to play with cars. Because this whole number is just about how the boys are back. Like they're back to their wild ways where they used to play in the junkyard. I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot. It's beyond me. Boys are back. The boys are back. Why did High School Musical just become every commercial for Nerf Gun? We got Troy and Chad out here acting like they're part of the Russian acrobatics. Literally, they go through this thing where they're like pretending to sword fight, saving a damsel in distress, fighting a dragon. It's so cheesy, I feel like there might be nachos afoot. Do all of you nocturnal junkyard dancers have a ride home after this? Does someone have a cell phone? All right, just let me know. This whole scene looks very Power Rangers to me. They're like, whoo, 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 
And there are guys wearing like vests made out of garbage being like, but the best part, the best part has to be with this piece of casting where we get to see young Troy and young Chad for the first time ever. This movie cost $11 million, and the best you could do for young Chad was this kid in a jerry curl wig. It's awful. This is child abuse, mama. So at the end of that number, it turns out it's clear, like, oh, Chad, he accepts, like, what are you gonna do if you get accepted to Juilliard? And he's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, man. So anyway, back at the house, again, we never see this yearbook. Would have been a great thing to tease that up, especially since Taylor has basically nothing to do in this movie, except for have good ideas. Gabrielle is like, I'm not sure if I wanna go to this honors program at Stanford. And Taylor's like, you have to. You can fly back for graduation. It's not that big of a deal. Who cares if you miss the show? But Gabrielle is really sad because she doesn't want to leave Troy and she's sad that her relationship's ending. This is just another example of the movie being overly long. Like, why do we have this whole part of the scene where Taylor's in there? She leaves and then Gabriella's mom comes in and gives her some more comforting advice. Like, is there just a revolving door of helpful maternal forces in the room? Why couldn't we have gotten the same amount of information from just one of those two characters? Oh, because you needed to justify both of their existence in the movie? High school feels like it's the most important thing in the world when you're in it, but that changes. Not everything has to change, Mom. I don't believe that. Gabriella really just said, no, I choose to let this ruin my entire life. That barely legal twink has destroyed me, Mother, and it's your job to pick up the pieces. Oh, did you want another Troy and Gabriella number? You better open that mouth and let me cram in some music. Could be better, you've already proved it worked. 2,123 hours Universe. Excuse me, those lyrics sounded just a little too close to Seasons of Love for my taste. Now legally, for licensing purposes, one of you has to inject heroin. I vote Troy. It can only help with his weird twitchiness. At this point, Gabriella still hasn't told Troy that she's been accepted to this early Stanford program. That's where Sharpay comes in. I don't know what you're talking about. Everyone else does. I guess her not telling you means that she's on the fence about it. Who better than Troy Bolton to encourage her to accept the honor? Since the only thing possibly holding her back would be you. Well, I'll say rehearsal. Toodles. Once again, Sharpay is the real main character of this story because she's the only one who got any good clothes out of this higher budget. She's wearing all designer. They got Gabriella running around most of the time without shoes on. We feel like Gabriella's character is kind of dressed like a little girl who's playing out in the yard. Troy surprises her with a pizza picnic in their room and he asks her about Stanford. And basically, stupid Gabriella is like, I'm thinking about not going to Stanford next year. I'm gonna put it off for a year. You gotta go, it's the right thing to do. I always do the right thing. You know, but maybe I want to be a little crazy this time. There's nothing crazy about staying in your hometown, sweetheart. Moving to Stanford, California and making out with a Jewish girl? Now we're living on the edge, honey. That's where the real crazy stuff happens. Go to college, then you'll make some crazy choices, I promise. I do think, for all of the flaws in this movie, like at this point particularly, I was like, oh, you know, I actually do kind of remember that weird, sad feeling that you get from your senior year of high school. Like, it was interesting at that time to be excited for the future, but also already kind of missing the past. And you have all of these parents and adults around you being like, this is the best time of your life. You're about to have so much fun. The future is now. But you're already kind of like missing being a child or missing the past year and realizing how much fun it was. There are moments of that in this movie for sure, but oof, it's a, it's a labor to watch through this. We go right into this song, Walk Away. Basically throughout this song, uh, Gabriella packs up her house and they move off. I don't know why Gabriella's mom is moving too. It's like, you don't have to follow her to college, but I guess that's what you're doing. <laughs> third act conflict was sponsored by Remax Realtors. Call Pat Gavindale today to find the property with the right number of past homicides for your family. Roy's obviously bummed that Gabrielle is not there anymore and dad's being no help. Some have been going to U of A games ever since you're a little kid. I guess I thought you understood that when I was a little kid, I was pretty much just letting you call the shots on whatever we did together. I didn't have a whole lot of say in the matter. I thought that was clear. This sends Troy into a flurry of emotions which can only be handled by fast walking through an empty location like he did in last movie's bet on it. Only now we're in the halls of East High after dark. Straight people, see, this is how basketball games always look to me. Now do you see why it's hurtful when you play these on TVs at bars and restaurants? It's like having nails put in my eye. Troy has this thing where he has to like flip his hair as much as he possibly can or you don't know what he's feeling.
Listen, Troy, we're fine giving you unlimited access to the school when it's closed, but can you at least leave up a wet floor sign? Kids are slipping on your sweaty handprints all over the place. This number is so long, and again, it does nothing for the story. It's just him going from one location to another with his arms spread as long as they can be. He was like, I'm gonna starfish all over this school, and that's gonna get me another job after this franchise. It's so tiresome. They're like, okay, now can you like grab onto these ropes and do like some Tarzan shit? Okay, sure, whatever. All it does is get him into the auditorium where he sees Miss Darbus and she's like, oh, seems like you're walking through some stuff. You seem very comfortable up there. I do. Which is why I submitted an application in your name to Juilliard. It was you. If I overstepped, I apologize. Well, I mean, only if you feel like committing mail fraud is overstepping. The FBI thinks so, so I don't know. I don't understand what these Juilliard submissions consist of. Did you just have to send in your email address? Be like, oh, I was in a musical last year. On the day of prom, Troy thinks that Gabrielle is flying back to him, but she calls and gives this bad news. I love you, Wildcat but I need to stay right where I am. Here at Stanford, they're doing this prison experiment and I feel like I'm really starting to gain some traction there. It sucks that Troy got broken up with on prom night, but I actually appreciated this level of realism in the movie because this kind of stuff does happen. Relationships get complicated when high school ends and I love watching those straight kids cry. It's like, oh, you've been going out with the same girl from eighth grade and now you're going to a different college across the world. Sucks to be you. By the time I left high school, every gay kid I ever dated hated me because because I was notoriously bad at paying for my own Chick-fil-A. Straight world and the gay world. Here I am eating chicken sandwiches on my own. Chad tries a little too soon to comfort Troy. Everybody knows that you don't bring the girl with you after high school. Right now, you gotta snap out of it, dude. Well, I guess you're right. I mean, it has been 13 seconds. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch here. This movie sucks. I keep having to take breaks just to go sit on the couch and look at a turned off TV screen to be like, oh, there is some peace in this world. Unable to accept that he's not gonna be able to dance with his best girl, Troy drives 1 million miles from New Mexico all the way to Stanford, where he surprises Gabriella and she's all like, oh my God, my vagina is sweating over you. And then they dance in a fantasy scene. Look, I don't know what you're singing about, but you already did a song about prom and it ruined my stomach lining, so we're done here. We're melting like ice cream, I left in the sunbeam, my nipples ache. That's what you sound like to me, and it's so dumb with your blurry ass filter. Chad Danforth has his friggin' letterman number on the back of his tuxedo. So I'm gonna give me a fire axe and I'm gonna use it badly. Uh, so it's the night of the big show. I guess the big show was happening right after prom. Honestly, they could have done a lot more work to make the timeline of this movie make sense to me. Like, I think it takes place over all of senior year, but no, it can't because they had the last basketball game. They should have used that first song to let me know where in the school year we were. Like, it's three months till graduation. I hope that I don't shit myself. Anyway, it's the night of the big show. That's all you need to know. Troy Bolton just sent me a text. Probably just checking in. Been driving all night. I'll try to make it for the second act. What does that mean? Dude, that's showbiz. But you're going on tonight. High School Musical 3 is like a childhood head injury. I blame both for my mental issues. Because she's so caught up with the show, basically Sharpay doesn't get the message that someone's gonna be replacing Troy on stage. And Jimmy is too nervous to go out there until he decides to do this. <laughs> I don't care if we're in a show or not. If you corner me on a balcony, I'm gonna start scratching your eyes out. That's just survival instinct. The way my jaw dropped when that man jumped out there dressed like that, I was like, oh no. I think they wanted it to be this moment of like, oh, the audience loves it. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're just glad the kids are having fun. I'm not having fun. I'm having no fun. I'm having less fun than I was when High School Musical 1 started and Gabriella couldn't even open her mouth properly to say a line. That was more fun. Of course, because Gabriella's out, Sharpay took Gabriella's role, which means Kiera, the British girl, got to be the understudy for Sharpay. Ugh. London Academy of Dramatic Arts. I took the job with you to learn the ropes at East High. Now I have. I need to warm up and give a good first impression, since it will be my drama department next year. Well, you better hope they're doing Mary Poppins or My Fair Lady next year, Flemmy, because with that accent, your voice just screams, I'm the maid. Also, I don't care what happens to this drama club after Sharpay leaves. That's not a conflict that matters to any of the characters. <gasps> I wish they could have gone into something where this British girl was doing 
more to secretly sabotage Sharpay the whole time. Like what if, oh, she went to do our audition and they played her song backwards or she was doing her vocal warmups and she got electrocuted by her throat warmer. And all of those things get traced back to Tierra who is trying to sabotage her. That would have been a little more funny for me. But the real recommendation is just cut that character, cut that other kid's character. Like we don't need them. But of course, Troy and Gabriella make it in time just for their big song at the second act, which we've already heard in some form or another, like four times. So again, I'm sick of hearing these songs. There's like no good memorable song except for I Want It All. And the rest just feels like all the same thing. Every time, every Zac Efron said, I'm not learning tons of fancy dances for this, okay? You get the triumphant arm raise and you get the emotional nostril flare. Those are my only two moves. Earlier on, it was like Troy getting frustrated because they couldn't do this dance move where they both had to like step together alternating. It was not a hard looking dance move, but this movie just wants to build it up like this is a big success. Juilliard scouts in the audience better be signing some fucking checks. When it's time for the big graduation scene of the musical, which I guess is also the time when they announce who gets the Juilliard scholarship, that's very convenient. We find out that Ryan won as well as Kelsey. And they call forth Troy, and I guess it's his job to tell the whole world what he's doing for college on stage. Mr. Troy Bolton. I've chosen basketball, but I've also chosen theater. The University of California, Berkeley offers me both. As well as a thriving student culture of antibiotic resistant chlamydia that's been passed down from many famous alumni, such as Gregory Peck. I choose the person who inspires my heart. It's why I picked a school that's exactly 32.7. Miles from Ooh, someone better phone ahead to Berkeley. Let them know that Troy can skip the prereq on using MapQuest. It's so annoying, like, I get it. This couldn't have been the only school that had a basketball team and a theater program, but I get it. They want them to be close together. I don't. I think it would have been more fun if they had to split up because I don't believe that when they're 37 miles apart at college, they're gonna stay together. Like how often in your freshman year of college are you gonna drive 37 miles to visit your girlfriend from home? Maybe once or twice? I give it eight months and not even a fun eight months. It's a miserable eight months where you're both gaining weight and stressed. Yeah, I've been to college. I know what's up. It's graduation time where we get this kind of choral version of we're all in this together, which I kind of like. We are all gathered here today to let your grandparents get heat stroke. Despite not being the valedictorian or anyone really that special or important to most of the school, Troy Bolton gets to give the commencement speech. He's just the straightest, whitest guy. So we celebrate that here at Disney. East High is having friends that we'll keep for the rest of our lives. And I guess that means we really are all in this together. Yeah, like in a we'll keep in touch on Facebook sort of way. But not before we do one more fun number, baby. Cute chicken dance kids, I can't wait to see how this hopeful attitude holds up against the opioid epidemic. I guess we have to end with this sort of cheesy little paying tribute to all of the cast. Kelsey's like, I'll just hang up my picture back here, I guess. I'm the one who wrote all the music in these shows, but don't let me ruin your even number. I hate these little portraits where they're like crying and looking out to the audience after like, who are you looking at, me? I don't need to see you, this is over. Let me know what you think of this one below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns just like this. It really helps support this channel. I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. Turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when you never have to let it go. Also, I've got merch down below. Thank you to my patrons so much for supporting the channel. You guys can check that out if you want exclusive content. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for getting into the senior year of it all with me today. I will see you next time.